Hey everybody, so in today's video we're going to build out our create post page for our full stack blog application. In the prior videos we set up a registration and login page and given access to a user. Now that we have a user that has access to our page we want to go ahead and build out this create post page. So here we have the page that we'll be building. We see we have our contain section here. We have a H1 header of create post, a little border design that I've decided to add as well and we'll ask our user to enter in a title to share their thoughts and they could pick a category and once they've entered in that information they'll click on create post and from here the post will be created sent to our endpoint API and it'll be added to our database and we'll confirm that it's in the database as well so the first thing we'll need to do in order to create or build our create post page is to set up the page structure so we can do so by navigating into the SRC directory in the app directory and then we want to create another directory inside of the app directory named create dash post create dash post excuse me and inside of it let's create a file named page.js so inside of the page.js let's just go ahead and add in the boilerplate template so that we can have a page set up and if we save our file and go back to our localhost 3000 so let's go ahead and refresh the page just to make sure that our server is still running so if you restarted your server and you're not logged in be sure to log in with the registered account once you're registered and logged into the site you should see the create post link in the, on the right hand side here if we click on that create post link we see that it takes us to this create post page and we see it in our URL here as well. So we know the routing is working as designed. Now, if we go back to our page.js file within the create post folder, let's go ahead and build out our page. So inside of our page.js file, let's go ahead and bring in our imports first. We'll start out with use client um, at the top of the page. Then we'll bring in our router from next navigation. This is to redirect the user back to the home page after they've successfully created a post. Use state will be used to capture the text from the user, the title, the description, and the category. Finally, we have use session from next off. This is going to give us access to the session data. This will be required to only allow registered logged in users to create a post. If you'd like for me to make a video about how that works in a little more detail, just let me know in the comment section and I'll be happy to. Now inside of our create post component, let's initialize our state variables by using the use state hook. We're going to create variables for our title, our description, and for our categories. The next variable we want to set up is our use session hook. The use session hook is going to give us access to our session data. The status variable is going to represent the current status like if it's loading, if it's authenticated, or if it's unauthenticated. And the data variable is going to hold the session data itself. So we want to display a loading message while the page is loading. So we're going to make sure that we add that in as well. Of course, we're going to use, we're going to, we want to set up a variable for our router so that we can redirect the user once the post is created. So we'll start by creating a simple loading word variable. And we'll, we'll take a look at this um, in just a moment. But basically what this is saying is that if the status based on the use session here is equal to loading, we're going to send back a loading message on the screen just for the end user experience. And here's the text styling that I have listed as the class name. So for right now, let's just save our file. If we go back to our localhost 3000, we should still be on the create post page. If we refresh the screen, You'll see that we're getting the word loading now because the session status is loading. So we just want to present that to the user. So now back in our text editor, underneath the loading status statement, the next status we want to care for is if the user is unauthenticated. We're going to send a message or have a message on the screen, excuse me, that says access denied. Now, if you're not logged in, technically it should automatically redirect you to the register screen, but we're going to add this in to care for the status based on the session data that we're getting from next off. And we can test this out at the end of the video, but technically um, it really should just redirect the user back to the home screen. Now we want to create our handle submit function. And of course, with our uh, handle submit function, we want to start by preventing the default. 
then we want to have validation and we'll set the toast notifications up later but basically this is saying that, that if there's no title no category or description when the user hits submit we're going to send a message back that all fields are required next we want to create our try catch block so inside of it we're going to create a variable named res and this variable is going to hold the fetch function to send the post request to the server and we're going to send it to the endpoint that we created in the earlier video inside of the app directory the api folder and inside of that the post folder and anytime we make these type of requests we have to care for the headers object to specify what we're going to be sending to that api endpoint so inside of the headers we know we're going to send the content type and we're going to send the type to be json data this header indicates that the request body contains JSON data and it helps the server understand how to interpret that data in the request body. The next one is the authorization status. So with next off, we don't actually have to store this session in the database. We can actually send it over using the set the use session hook to maintain our authentication. We want to make sure that we distinguish the method and of course this method is going to be a post method. And from our body, we're going to be capturing the title, the description, and the category. And we also want to make sure that we're capturing the author ID. This is going to allow us to store and to tie it back to a user because anytime we create a post, we want to tie it back to a user so that we can see who authored that post. And we're basically just going to use the ID from the session data that, that we're getting from the use session hook. Now we're just going to create a validation that if the status is not res.ok, we're going to say that an error occurred. Otherwise, we want to store that information in a variable named post and we'll go ahead and save it and we'll redirect the user back to our home screen. And of course, we always want to console.log any potential errors. So we'll take a quick look at what we have here, but this should care for all the functionality within our posts. Now we're going to work on our return statement. So within our return statement, we'll always start out by removing the divs and replacing it with the section tag. And let's just save just to make sure that it carried over correctly and navigate back to our localhost 3000. We see that we now have a container with a slightly different background and the words create post. So we know that our tailwind and our class name function is working as design. Inside of our section tag, I'm just going to add in a little bit of styling. This is certainly personal preference and nothing that's going to be relevant to the functionality of our create post page. So as you can see, we have a little bit of styling for our H1. In addition to this little border that I added, certainly optional, nothing that you have to do, but I just want to add this additional styling. So now back in our page.js, underneath the divs that we just added, let's go ahead and add in our form to handle our submit function so we'll create our form and as you can see we have our on submit method and inside of it we have the handle submit function and inside of our form we're just going to add in the input fields that will handle the request from our user the first input field is going to handle our title the second one is going to handle the description and here you just want to include the on change method and the and we're listening for the submit event that we're going to add in in just a second and we're going to capture the title and description from the user set it in our state and then use it to send it to our backend api request so next we'll add in the category field and this is going to be a select option because we want to control what categories are available on our blog post so we'll use the select option and inside of it we'll add in the option here we have the predetermined categories that we want our user to select from in order to determine what category goes along with their post and then last but not least inside of our form we want to make sure that we're including the submit button this is just what will be used in order to submit the request from our front end to our back end so if we save our page we should see that we now have our create post fields we have the title we have the description and we have the category and if we refresh the page we'll see we're getting the loading message first and now we have the create post form loaded so let's submit a post to our back end and let's make sure that this is working as designed 
you, I'm gonna paste in some fake post data, but feel free to use anything that you like. And once you have in your post data, um, the category for this particular post is gonna be sports. I'm gonna click post. And if all goes well, we should be redirected back to our home screen. And we see it right here that we are, and it says hi there. Now, if we navigate back to our MongoDB database, if you're not logged in, go ahead and log in. And once you logged in, if you browse down to collections, you should see that you have a new field named post. And here is the post that I just created. And we see that we have the author ID as an object, and the author ID ends in seven, excuse me, it ends in C78. And if we click on our users, we'll see that the user here ends in C78. This is the user that created the post. So it appears that our create post page is working as designed. We're able to submit the request from the front end to the back end. Our object ID is, our author ID is being captured by the object ID, which is what we created and what we wanted. So that is working as well. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and work on our home screen. I appreciate you taking the time to watch today's video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to give it a like, consider subscribing.